You may not immediately recognize the names Chris Lighty and Blue Williams, but you certainly heard the music of the artists they represent together. Uh, they are two of the biggest managers in hip hop music, and they're here today to discuss their recent decision to merge their two companies. Uh, Primary Violator is the name of the new company. I want to welcome Blue Williams and Chris Lighty. How are Thank you? Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Good, good. First of all, uh, managing some of the biggest names uh, in the music business. Chris, you managed the careers of everyone from 50 Cent to Soldier Boy, to LL Cool J, Buster Rhymes. Blue, you work with CeeLo Green, Nick Cannon, Genuine, Young Jock, all of these uh, huge artists, including Eric Benet, the R&B singer. Now you're merging. What are you looking to accomplish with this? Um, I think the idea of the merge was really about growth. I think that Chris and I have been doing it on such a high level for so long on our own that we felt that merging together would just allow us to continue to grow, provide better services to our clients, and and actually just give us both, you know, a little extra push with each other as well, you know. I think we, we talked about when you manage for as long as we have and run our own companies, you get into a place where you are the smartest person in the room a lot. Right, right. And, you know, sometimes when you have a partner or someone with you, you can push each other. And it's obviously, you know, a pretty significant deal, especially in the urban music uh, world. There's not a bigger management company. But you do more than just the day-to-day -day operations, management, branding, film and television. Tell me basically about your job, Chris, from a day-to-day -day perspective. Uh, from a day-to-day, -day, it could be everything from just making sure the clients are on time to dealing with all their brand extensions. Like with 50 Cent, we're created a new brand extension called Street King. Obviously, we've had vitamin water and uh, Reebok deals and clothing deals and, you know, LL Cool J being on television and also having a health book and, you know, uh, going back to creating other literature opportunities with 50, other opportunities with Soldier Boy for video games and, you know, always expanding the brand. And I think the coming together also is a uh, a good statement for our culture because it's usually been the crab in a barrel effect you know mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. african-american not helping the other african-american so this is like the first time really showing unity imagine if uh... russell simmons and andre harrell had did def jam uptown together instead of doing them apart you know it could have been phenomenally the uh... as big as def jam was and i was part of that but yeah. with andre it could have been absolutely bigger than Motown. I always say Def Jam was my Motown, but if you, those two people have gotten together, they're best of friends, so right. why right. did they not do their company together? Yeah. So we're thinking we'll provide more services, provide more opportunities for our clients. Okay, so it's really a next generation uh, extension. And you mentioned that you did uh, work with Russell Simmons and Lear Cohen earlier in your career. You also, mm -hmm. even back before then, carried crates for DJ Red, Red Alert, Alert managed a uh, tribe called Quest, and all of these De things. Soul, How did that Jungle prepare Brothers. you for this? Because you've um, done a lot more now than you did with those groups. Uh, I think it, all of those things prepared me to, because we were the only ones that were moving the ball forward. If we dropped the ball as Tribe Called Quest of De La Soul, there was no one else to pick it up. If we dropped the ball at Def Jam, everyone was counting us out and looking for us to fail. So we constantly had to expand the opportunity and expand the realm of existence and possibilities for the artist. And now, uh, being able to, the internet be, being a big play in our business and the realms of possibilities are really endless. Mm -hmm. So we can constantly push the envelope. And, you know, 10 years ago, you would have said, we're going to sell water. I would have laughed at you. <laughs> but now I'm like, we're going to sell water. We're going to do an energy shot. And we're going to do it in timing. And we're going to try and feed a billion kids. And, you know, we're going to take a gangster rapper who got shot nine times and turn him into the hip hop bono. Right. And, and Blue, uh, we talked earlier, you talked a lot about not just the management, but the idea of taking athletes to market as brands and also having a film and television division. Is this basically what celebrities have to do now, is to really have a 360-degree um, approach to how they do their business? 
I think that the, just the world has just lent to people being able to explore all of their options and that now if you're an athlete, you don't just want to play basketball, you want to try and do more and you want to lengthen the, the, the length of your career. So, you know, if you're playing the NFL, your life cycle is about five years. So you want to find a way to get that five years and turn it into other opportunities. So Chris over the years has worked with a couple of boxers like Winky Wright and things like that. I've worked with some NBA players currently representing the NBA, Chris Singleton, number one pick for the Washington Wizards in last year's draft. And as he enters the league this year, the plan is already what's after. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, it's what we do in management anyway. When we get clients, we're already looking at the long term. You know, what if this is your only album? What if you have five albums? So how do we maximize your income streams? Mm -hmm. How do we create as many opportunities? What are you good at? What can we can we sell to the people with your name on it so that you have more than just one source of income and you're not just a one-trick pony? Right. Uh, and looking at the way that you kind of uh, innovated this part of the, the profession, it's interesting to see where you came from, both kids from the Browns. Um, I talked to you at separate times, uh, and both of you told me at different times that you didn't even expect that you would live to be 30 years old. 21. Yeah, 21 was expected. <laughs> out of Bronx 21. The yeah, you weren't supposed to make it to 21. Tell me about your, gr your growing up and um, how that informed what you do. I think that, you know, my mother raised me. She was a single mother. She raised, raised me in the Bronx. Uh, she was a principal for the Board of Education. She spent 20 years in the South Bronx educating. And her work ethic and teaching me the different parts of life, taking me outside just New York and traveling, influenced me to want to do more than just be a kid on the block and wanting to see the world. The music industry allowed me a chance to see the world and explore. And that, I think, has just carried through the work ethic and pushing it through and trying to do the best that you can do. Not just being regular, just sort of always excelling at it. What about you, Chris? Uh, you know, I think I wake up every morning with the passion to that if I don't have the passion, they're going to figure out a way to take it from me. <laughs> so, okay. so I get out and go to work. I have, I love the Bronx, but I have no intentions of going back <laughs> to Bronx River Projects unless I'm going there to throw a cookout and, you know, try and bring some people out of and give a helping hand and opportunity. Um, my family was about, you know, definitely education and getting the best education possible. I, I just was, I believe, unbelievably fortunate to meet Red Alert and Scott LaRock and, you know, to be under their tutelage and then to have Russell Simmons and Leo Cohen, more Leo Cohen, and come and look for me to join, you know, Rush Management in 1989. And, you know, I was able to flourish under their tutelage and, uh, grow and learn and I took every opportunity as an opportunity to expand. You, uh, at one time I remember you telling me that you sit down every one of your artists in the beginning and you say make as much money as you can now Yes. because that opportunity may not be here long. Exactly. How do you manage the personalities of these big mega stars? Well you know uh, for me I, I constantly tell my clients if there's a date that's coming in and you don't want to do it because you want to stay home and play Xbox, go do the date and give the money to your mother. <laughs> because you sh you're probably going to give her well over a year's worth of salary, and it's going to take you maybe a day out of your Xbox and PlayStation playing. So let's pause that, and let's do that, and let's think about the retirement fund. You know, I've been with Buster since he's was 16, 17 years old. He's now had a 20 plus year career. And you know, I've been with LL a long time again, 20, he's had a 25 year career. And you know, fortunately, I've seen some artists really take advantage of the opportunity of making the money and making brand extensions and others that have uh, unfortunately missed the boat because they thought it was gonna last forever. Uh, and I want to ask you, uh, I have two more questions for you. One about the vitamin water deal, because yes. everyone, that's the iconic deal that everybody right. talks yeah. about, but, and now everyone's fighting to get that right. kind of deal. Um, what inspired you to take stock? 
um, what you did that led to this one people say it's a hundred million dollar right. transaction yes but you said told me at one point that it wasn't that much money yeah it was it was it, it realms about that you know <laughs> okay when well, it hey. gets 80 or 90 <laughs> it doesn't matter really, it doesn't really matter <laughs> okay, it's, a, it was, it's a lot of money but 50 but cent took stock yeah the, the thought process to was to take stock uh, we had just sold 12 million albums 50 had just clocked in the world tour with Jay-Z uh, two $25 million checks, so he made $50 million, bought a house cash, and w we sat in a room and 50 said, I want to do water instead of uh, liquor. And I said, oh, water, okay, and fortunately found vitamin water. They couldn't pay us to be, uh, you know, it was an upstart. There was no way they could have cut a check for who 50 was at that moment to endorse the brand. And I commend, you know, Darius and Rohan because at that time, 50 probably was the most dangerous person on the planet. <laughs> Everyone was waiting for the movie to play out badly. And us taking stock was the point that we believed in the product and we also believed that we could make a difference by uh, getting the grape flavor because we know we knew that our culture, the Hispanic and African American culture had a affinity to the flavor grape and that as long as 50s vernacular was always about vitamin water and totality and not just formula 50 we could expand this brand and grow the brand and you know it took f a little under four years and coca-cola came knocking and we all rejoiced we ran out of time but <laughs> i know there's a lot more that we could talk about and we hope to have you back definitely thank, thank you. you so much thank chris you. lighty and blue williams primary violator the new management company i'm lee hawkins we'll see you next time Thanks.